What are you practicing here? Scales, arpeggios? What are you doing in this exercise? The purpose for me is to make the instrument disappear. That's my goal with practicing. <laughs> You know, the, the thing about touring is it's not it's not in any way, shape, or form just the gig in the city, the, the time on stage, the work is the other 22 and a half hours a day. It is 4 p.m. London time. Fortunately, we got here one day ahead of the first show of the tour just to have a chance to acclimate. I feel pretty good and ready to begin this three-week tour. And now to revisit an old classic, the hotel room practice session. I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland right now. Well, I'm, uh, I'm close to the airport, actually. It's a beautiful, sunny day here outside of Edinburgh, Scotland. <laughs> a little cold, actually. The tour has been fantastic so far. We had four shows in a row. We played London at the Jazz Cafe. Manchester at Band on the Wall. Leeds, a place called the Brudenell Social Club. last night, the Blue Arrow in Glasgow. The shows have been really fun, really fantastic, and it's been, uh, it's also been a bonus that we were this time traveling with our own sound engineer, a guy named Will from Glasgow who is crushing it. And uh, the sound is, oh, it just makes such a difference on stage uh, to have the sound be consistent and have it be nice. And you know, who was it that said this to me once? Joe Lovano said, you know, your sound is your concept, meaning like what you hear coming back to you. And whether that means through the gear that you're playing, you know, whatever your current sound is, but I'm talking about more you're on stage and whatever it is that you're hearing coming back at you through a monitor, or lack of monitor, whatever that sound is that's coming back your way, it informs your musical choices to some degree, at least I find that. And it can be one of the most challenging things to do is to try to play through bad sound or sound that just, you know, it, it just can be so depressing when you're, you know what you should sound like, you individually on your instrument, but also the band, etc. And when you're not hearing that or anything close to that reflected back at you, it's it's challenging, very challenging. Uh, anyway, we are very fortunate this time that we're having a great experience with the sound and the clubs and the audiences have just been fantastic. And I can't tell you how just it, it's so much fun for me getting to meet, you know, some of you who watch these videos and listen to the music and just meeting and talking with people after the shows. It's a true highlight for me.
<sighs> I'm still working on the video that I want to put together, the behind the scenes video from my, uh, from recording Immigrants with Snarky Puppy. That's shelved for the moment, but it's in, it's in production. And I thought I, I might just take this opportunity to answer a few questions. I'll start with this one. When I, when I got to London, the first thing I did was a, a hotel practice session. So I put something up on Instagram of me practicing with the towel and the bell. <laughs> questions started to come in. Hey Bob, could you explain more about this? Is there any particular routine? I live in a small flat in Paris. I cannot practice as much as I would like. What are you practicing here? Scales? Arpeggios? What are you doing in this exercise? So I think more than anything, you can hear the air and you can hear my fingers popping on the keys. In fact, the reason that I am always talking about this 60 BPM tempo, and it's not to say that I never ever Put the metronome in other places but for me it's a great place to sort of just reset and that's what i'm looking for so when i arrived on on this tour specifically i'd been so busy with other things in the in the, the week even leading up to it and then spending time with my family and we had a like a birthday trip and anyway just stuff going on where honestly i hadn't had like in my mind i thought oh i'm gonna be practicing like four hours a day before i leave for the tour I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I don't even get to practice four hours a day ever. So I don't know, I, that was just crazy. So I get on the tour and I've got one night and one morning before the first gig. What can I do to really center myself and connect with the instrument? A lot of the way that I come at practicing, whether it's at full volume or being quiet, the purpose for me is to make the instrument disappear. That's my ideal, that's my goal with practicing. I don't want to be thinking about the saxophone in particular, and even music so much like on a, on a that sounds weird, I wanna be thinking about music, but I wanna be on stage and just feel like whatever thoughts I'm hearing or whatever I'm hearing coming next, I can just execute it on the saxophone. That's my ideal. So my practicing is geared towards as much as possible getting me to that place. So, you know, I put the metronome on and one of my um, one of my students pointed this out to me recently. He's like, you know, you're not just playing slow, like at 60. And, and I call it my three S's, slow, straight, and slurred. Slow, straight, and slurred. Why slurred? Because you can't measure the accuracy of your delivery, note to note, if you're articulating. See, if you start every note with, the, with a tongue attack, then you can't really tell if you're right on the click or not. But if you put the metronome on, and you're not playing loud, right? Well, notice what you hear. Ah, you hear early. Oh, that one was early too. Just a fraction of a second early. Oh, early. 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 So that's what I'm measuring when I'm doing these exercises. So in answer to this question, what am I practicing? Scales, arpeggios? Yes, both, um, all, all sorts of things. But generally, some sort of, you know, scales, chromatic scales, if I can get through all the major scales, and I, I started to do them in intervals, do them in thirds, do them in fourths, do them in fifths, do them in sixths, and do them in sevenths. And again, by practicing that slow, what I'm doing is I'm trying to even out my technique and my fluidity in all ranges and all keys. I think very often a mistake people can make, I, I certainly made this mistake early on, was you tend to rush through the easy parts and slow down on the hard parts. And the, the flaw in that, by, so you know, you go to play a scale and you're like, you know, something like that. The problem for me is if I practice that way, then I'm, I'm training myself to behave that way. So what I want is evenness of execution. And by slowing everything down to such a degree, like quarter notes at 60 BPM, and I don't always do quarter notes at 60 BPM, but this is especially helpful when I really feel like I need to get back on the horse. I'm able to push these notes down with some force. I don't need my fingers to come flying off to do it. I mean, they're on the keys, but I can really Hear that? That's what I'm going for. And that way, 
whether it's a G major scale or a D flat major scale, a C major or a G flat major scale, and all the way through three octaves, altissimo, everything. It all can be, for, I, for me, I can execute everything at that tempo. So by practicing that way, I'm, I'm training myself to behave equally in every key and in every range of the horn. And with the towel and the bell and by playing so soft that you're basically just hearing the air. You know, you're not hearing. I haven't played yet today, this is from last night, but. tedious for sure but it's meditative for me it like I said it helps me connect my connect myself it helps myself connect myself with my instrument um, and just kind of get into a, a calmer state I never want to be on stage thinking about a lick a riff a pattern a scale or anything I just want those things available to me in the background and so that's why I, most of the time I'm practicing that way especially in in situations where I have less than ample practice time. You know, it's all basically a glorified warm up. So that's one of those things I often tell students, especially like new students of mine, that it's, you know, a lot of what I do is, um, is executable, if that's a word, is that a word? Uh, by somebody who is maybe not a beginner, but like you don't need to be an advanced player to execute a lot of the things that I practice the way that I practice them. Uh, is that an advanced technique? To me it is, um, but often you might think, oh, something that's advanced is you're talking about speed or complexity. And for me, it, it becomes more and more about simplicity and efficiency. We are continuing tomorrow to Dublin. We'll be at the Sugar Club in Dublin, and then we're gonna be in Cardiff in Wales. And then Southampton, I'll put a link to the tour dates under here, but I will, uh, I don't know when I'll be able to check in again, but um, I might try to tackle a couple more of these questions from the road. maybe seven or eight hours for a banana from where it's like that perfect it's a little bit it's not like mushy yet but it's not like oh, after green I'm peeling it too early right, no, it's right. not no, it's not that okay. it's a little after that when it's you can eat it and that's the perfect yeah. time for a banana and yeah I think Bob would agree